Hello student. Today we are going to study entity relationship data model. So what do you mean by entity? How the entities have the relationship among the other entities that we are going to study under the ER model. So ER model is a logical representation of a data as an object and the relationship among them. These objects are known as the entities and the relationship is known as the association among these entities. So ER model helps to analyze the data requirement systematically to produce a well-designed database. It is considered a best practice to complete ER modeling before implementing your database. Why? Because we know that if you want to write a complete program in any of the programming languages like C, C++, Java, then you generally you use to draw what? Flowcharts. So in the flowchart, you can use various notations and you can read the values. You can have some decision if statement. If the if statement is true, then you can use any loop where the control will again go and read the different values. So in this way, you can draw the flowchart to understand the complete flow of the program. Similarly, if you want to design the database, it is a best practice to draw ER model or to design the ER model. How ER model will be represent? ER diagram is used to represent the ER model. So it describes data as entities, properties of entities as the attribute and relationship among the entities. ER model was introduced by Peter Chen in 1976 and is now the most widely used conceptual data model. It is a conceptual. There are three levels of data model, three levels. What is that? We can say three schema architecture we have studied in the previous lecture. So we have studied there is an internal level, there is a conceptual level, and there is an external level. So under the conceptual level or logical level, we can say that it ER model, we can draw the ER model or represent the data with the help of ER model. So ER diagram can express the overall logical structure of the database. How it looks? This is one of the example of a ER diagram for bookshop management system. So in this, we can identify that some of the rectangular boxes are there. It shows some value, it shows some names like author, publisher, book, customer, warehouse. So these are the some of the names we can see here in the rectangular boxes. So ER diagram has some uh, notations to draw various, various uh, data like entities, relationship among the entities, attributes and so on. These notations we are going to study one by one. So this is one of the example of ER diagram for bookshop management system. So on the similar line, I did, we will add in first understand each and every term which comes under ER model or ER diagram. So what in my entity? An entity is a thing or an object in the real world that is distinguishable from other objects with an independent existence. How independent existence? Because each object or we can say entity has, has particular attribute. So an entity is represented by a set of attributes or features that is descriptive properties. For example, if we consider customer is an entity, then customer has a customer ID, customer name, customer street, city, phone number, email address, and so on. Similarly, if we consider a loan as an entity, then loan number amount, what is the amount has to be paid monthly. Or we can say that 
if the student is an entity then the registration number or roll number name class age contact number address and so on so this is the this is these are the examples of the entity employee employee id employee name address and so on so what do you mean by entity entity is a thing or a object in the real world or we can say that an entity may be an object with physical existence for example customer a student employee these are the entity with which has a physical existence or we it can be a object it can be object with conceptual existence how, how? like load like event like courses all these are the these are the conceptual existence now what is my entity set entity set means there is a collection of entities there is a collection of entities of a particular entity type in the database at any point of time it is called as the entity set so entity set means for example there are number of employees who are working in a particular organization so these attributes are common for hundreds of employees who are working in an organization it means each employee has employee id name address salary so each employee is, is recognized or identified by all these unique attributes of a particular employee therefore it is called as the set employee entity set set of all person companies set of trees set of holidays and so on how to represent the entity in er mode employee is the entity here so here how you are representing with the help of rectangular box so employee is a entity employee id employee name employee street employee city telephone number these are the attributes of this employee entity similarly there is another entity like telephone number so telephone number and the location can be the attributes now how these attributes are represented in the er diagram attributes of a particular entity is represented in the form of oval shape or the ellipse and how these are connected with the help of line which are connected with the entity different type of attributes you can see in the er model first is the simple attribute simple attributes means attributes which are has the atomic values composite attribute composite attribute simple attributes means for example employee id it is a simple attribute employee name it is a simple attribute employee street is a simple attribute composite attributes means composite attributes are made up of more than one simple attribute for example students complete name may have first name middle name and the last name therefore it is called as the composite attribute how to represent the composite attributes in a diagram here we can say that person has a name name can be consist of first name last name similarly person may have the different attributes like address or customer has the another attribute address address is represented with the help of street city state and zip code similarly street is represented with the help of street number street name apartment number so here how the name of the customer is represented name of the customer is represented with the help of first name middle initial and the last name therefore this is called as the name is called as the composite attribute address is called as the composite attribute street is called as the composite attribute next derived attribute derived attribute means the attributes are the that do does not have does not have its own existence physical data in the database now what do you mean by does not have do not exist in the physical database means their values are derived from the other attributes that's why these attributes are called as the derived attribute how we can calculate the derived attribute values 
for example average salary average salary in a department should not be saved directly in the database instead it can be derived for example age of the person can be derived from the date of birth so suppose date of birth is given of a student particular student then we can say that age is the derived attribute how to represent the derived attribute in er diagram with the help of dotted ellipse so age is a derived attribute how because if you know the date of birth of a person and the system current date then current date minus date of birth you will get the age you, you will not ask the age of the student age from the student yes we, our system will calculate the age with the help of date of birth and system date next single valued attribute single valued attribute means single valued attribute contains single value for example social security number here we can store only one one value only one value therefore it is called as a single valued attribute another is multi valued attribute multi valued attribute means attributes which contain more than one value for example a person can have more than one phone number can have a more, more than one email address can have a more than one degree so therefore this multi valued attribute is represented with the help of double ellipse so person may have number of hobbies hobbies means i like painting as well as singing as well as dancing like similarly i am a good programmer and so on so these are the hobbies different hobbies i have so i like painting i like dancing similarly a person may have more than one mobile number so i can say that the person can have one phone number therefore it is a multi valued attribute how it has to be represented in the er model or er diagram with the help of double ellipse so uh, we can see here rectangle represents what entity set rectangle represent entity set ellipse represent attributes underline attribute name it represent the key attribute now what do you mean by key attribute key attribute means key, key attribute means the attribute which has a unique unique uh, name or you, unique id for example student id roll number of a student it is a unique it can it cannot be repeated or it can be used for re, uh, for identifying a particular student from the class so it is the it is called as the key attribute therefore it is denoted with the help of underline in a particular attribute so ellipse with subdivision represents a composite attribute now see here the name is a composite attribute double ellipse represent multi valued attribute so here the hobbies similarly here student phone number it is a multi valued attribute dash ellipse it is represented with the help of dash so dash ellipse represent what it is derived attribute so this is the er diagram with composite multi valued and derived attribute so which is the composite attribute name is a composite attribute because it is com it is a composite of first name middle name initial similarly address address consist of street city state zip code street consist of seat, street number seat, street name and apartment number now multi valued attribute phone number is a multi valued attribute because one customer may have more than one phone number then date of birth from date of uh, sorry uh, the next is derived attribute so derived attribute here it is a age from date of birth we can calculate the age of a customer now another notations diamond what is this diamond represent diamond represent the relationship set can you read here match match played player 
so player played the matches or matches played by the player you can read like that generally we read from left to right and top to bottom so that's why i have read here match played by the players now what is this match match is a entity match id match date match stadium opponent one score and own score and opponent score so this is this is the one entity match now second entity is a player so matches played by the player player name player age and season score so what is this in the diamond it is a relationship between the two entity set and how it is linked with it is linked with the help of line so the line from one entity set to relationship set and from relationship set to entity set number of players are there therefore it is not a entity we always say it as a entity set so it is the link lines are nothing but it links the attribute to entity set and entity set to relationship set now next is the double line total participation of an entity in the relationship set it represent total participation student enrolled in a course so many each and every student should enroll in a particular course therefore there is a double line from student entity to relationship enroll in there is a single line here there is a single line single line means partial participation double line means total participation so every student should enroll for a particular course therefore there is a total participation single participation means okay uh, i will explain here only double line single line here it indicates partial participation total participation partial participation it means that number of courses are there but for each and there for each course every student will not enroll for every course so some of the courses some students will enroll some of the courses another students will enroll therefore there is a partial participation from course to enroll in the relationship and it is represented with the help of single line now this is one of the example of showing the relationship between the doctor and the patient this is related with the hospital management system doctor treats the patient how you have to read doctor treats the patient doctor id is there doctor salary is there qualification as you can see qualification can be a multi valued attribute so it is represented with the help of a double ellipse what is this doctor doctor is a strong entity now what is by strong entity and what do you mean by weak entity now doctor and patient it is represented in a single diamond single line diamond uh, rectangle single rectangle so it is a doctor having its own primary key or you can say a key attribute therefore doctor is a strong entity similarly patient each patient is represented with the help of patient id it can be recognized that patient 1 is different from patient 2 therefore patient id is assigned to each patient therefore patient and doctor these are the strong entities now what do you mean by weak entity weak entity means the entity which doesn't have its key attribute okay it is called as the it is called as the weak entity set for example loan has a payment or loan loan payment is the relationship between the loan and the payment what is this payment payment is a weak entity why because payment is exist on the loan if there is a loan then there is a payment if the customer is not taking any loan then there won't be any payment for the particular loan 
So if there is a loan L101, then there can be a number of payments for a particular loan. So loan number is a primary key or key attribute of a loan entity and the amount is another attribute. But payment, payment, there we can't say that payment number is a key attribute of a payment table. Why? Because for a particular loan, there can be a hundreds of payment. So payment number P1, P2, P3, P4, and so on. I cannot say that this payment has done for loan number L101. So there may be 100 of payments for 100 of months or for 200 of months. So payment is an entity which doesn't have its own key attribute. It has a partial key. Therefore, it is denoted with the dotted underline of the payment number under the payment number. Therefore, this is called as the partial key. So payment doesn't have the prime key attribute. It is depend upon a, another existence of another strong entity. Therefore, payment is represented with the help of double rectangle. It is a weak entity set. And also the relationship be between the strong entity, uh, weak entity set and the relationship between the between the strong entity and the weak entity, the relationship is also weak entity, weak relationship. Therefore, it is represented by the double diamond. So ER diagram and the entity sets customer and the loan. Customer borrows the loan. Customer is an entity, customer ID, customer name, customer street, customer city. So number of customers can be there in the database. So how you can represent particular customer? Because customer, there may be a number of customers in a particular bank. So this customer borrows the loan. Therefore, customer name, customer street, customer city, customer ID, these are the attributes. So customer ID, customer name, customer street, and customer city. Now what about the loan? Customer borrows the loan. So there is a loan number is the key attribute and amount is another attribute of a loan. How the loan number will be there for each and every loan and particular customer borrows the loan. So this is represented with the help of data. Re relationship set with the attributes. How the relationship will be there between the, uh, with the attributes. An attribute can also be a property of a relationship set. So this is a relationship set between the customer and uh, account. So customer deposits the in the account. So what is the access date? What is the access date of a particular account from particular customer? So for instance, the depositor relationship set between the entity set customer and account may have the attribute access date. So the customer who has access the, access the, his account, on a particular date. So we can assign the attribute to relationship set as well. So this is the this is the summary of the symbols used in ER diagram. So we have studied entity is represented with the help of rectangle. Attribute is represented with the help of oval. Weak entity set is represented with the help of double rectangle. Then this is represented, double oval is represented for multi-valued attribute. This is the diamond. R is the relationship. So it is a relationship set between the two entities. When there, okay. When there is a relationship between two entities, it is also called as the binary relationship because to, between the two entities, there is a binary relationship. Now, what is this derived attribute? It is an attribute 
which is derived from the other attribute values like date of birth from the date of birth we can calculate the age of a person age of a student age of a employee identifying the relationship set for a weak entity set double diamond obviously it is the relationship between the weak entity set and the strong entity set what is this total participation means relation relation uh, in the relation r entity e has a total participation now what is this a underscore a is attribute attribute k what uh, below the attribute what, uh, if we draw the underline then it is a primary key if it is a attribute having dotted line then it is a then it is a partial key or we also call it as a discriminant attribute of a weak entity set what is this relationship a relationship between the two entities can be of different type that can be one to one one to many that we are going to study in the next ppt so we'll study that and then we will go ahead with the other notations in the er diagram so this is this diagram also represent the various symbols and the meaning of these symbols which are used in the entity relationship diagram now what is what do you mean by role entity set of a relationship needs need not be distinct the label manager and workers are called as the role why because see here the employee works for the particular department so employee has a role of worker or a particular employee can also be a manager in the particular department so he has a two role employee can be a worker or employee can be a manager similarly student student is a member student is a member of a particular team or one of the student can be a leader of a team therefore what it is written here leader mem uh, member these are the role role of a entity in the particular relationship so that is optional it is not mandatory that you should write but it is better to write then you will come to know what is the role of a employee in the relationship whether he is a worker only or he has he is also one of the employees also the manager of a particular department so here i have written role labels are optional and are used to clarify the semantics of the relationship but you should know the concept now how the participation of a entity in the relationship set how will be the participation participation means customer borrows the loan that is a participation how it will be partial participation or total participation so partial participation some entities may not participate in a relationship in the relationship set so left hand side this one entity this is the another entity example participation of a customer in the borrower is a partial see here there is a single line between customer and borrower but there are two lines why because it is not mandatory that every customer in a bank will take the loan yes or no it is not mandatory so there is a single line between the customer and borrower few customer will take the loan few customer has only the saving account or the current account in a bank so there is a partial participation total participation means here the loan is a having in the with the relationship with the borrower is a total participation means for each loan there will be a one customer for each loan there will be associated with the customer so if the loan is there means every loan must have a customer associated with it via borrower therefore there is a total participation it cannot happen that loan hai but loan doesn't have the customer associated customer therefore total participation and partial participation in the relationship 
again we'll study weak entity in detail so weak entity set means an entity set that does not have a primary key just before this slide we have studied payment payment is a weak entity why because weak entity does not have a primary key primary key or we can say key attribute the attribute which is used to identify each and every payment although i can understand that this is a payment p1 is the first payment p2 is the second payment p3 is the third payment p4 but for which loan i am not understanding this okay so if i have a hundred of employees who have taken the loan l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 but this payment this five payments okay i am taking 1 2 3 4 five these five payments of uh for example l1 has taken the loan of 10 lakh okay and these are the payments of 100 of payments for the 10 lakh for 10000 each okay for 10 years or 50 lakh loan for 10 years so how can i identify that ki this payment belongs to a particular loan l2 no there is not possible i cannot identify therefore this payment is totally depend upon the loan because if the loan is there then there is a payment payment entity doesn't have its own existence if there is a loan then there will be a payment if there is a no loan for a particular customer then this payment entity will not be there for the customer who will not take the loan from the branch understood the existence of a weak entity set depend on the existence of a identifying entity set so what is here identifying entity set loan loan is a identifying entity set the entity which is strong entity is called a identifying entity set it must relate to the identifying entity set via total see here there is a total participation means every payment has a particular loan number one to many relationship set from the identifying to weak entity set identifying relationship depicted using the double diamond this relationship is represented with the help of double diamond the discriminator or partial key see here payment number is a partial key partial key or you can say as discriminant so what is this discriminant it is a key attribute or partial key attribute of a weak entity set the primary key of a weak entity set is formed by primary key of a strong entity set on which the weak entity set is existence dependent now here as the payment doesn't have its key attribute it will take the primary uh, uh, key attribute of the strong entity on which it depends as a as a primary key of or key attribute of this payment so this payment will becomes the strong it becomes a strong with the help of taking the primary key of or key attribute of another table in detail we are going to study how this uh, primary key and a key of a particular strong entity and weak entity will be represented in a database okay this is the example here primary key payment of a payment so payment number and loan number together becomes the primary key of the payment so payment is a weak entity set so always keep in mind that there will be a total participation from weak entity set towards the identifying relationship set another example courses contains the section if there is a course 
then there will be section. If there is no course, then there won't be any sections. So section is a weak entity represented with the help of double diamond and the relationship, identifying relationship, it is a double. It is also represented with the help of double diamond. Next example, employee. Employee has dependent. Employee has one dependent or employee has more than one dependent or employee doesn't have any dependent. It can be. It is not necessary that an employee should have a dependent. If the employee doesn't have any dependent, then there is a there won't be a dependent entity. So therefore, there is a dependency of a dependent entity on the employee. Dependent can be a daughter, mother, father, son, okay? Wife, all these are the dependent of a employee. So employee may have a dependent or may not have a dependent. Therefore, employees, uh, employee is a strong entity, whereas dependent is a weak entity. Now employee has its own primary key, key attribute employee ID. So employee, I, employee is represented with the, or identified with the help of employee ID 101, employee ID 102, 103, 104. Why it is unique? Because I have drawn here underline, it is a key attribute. Therefore, each employee has a unique employee ID. Whereas dependent, for example, a particular employee has a dependent. 101 has a dependent. What is the name of the dependent? For example, Amit. What is the relation? Relation is son and age is 15. Then another is Sita, wife, 40. Smith, son, 22. What I am understanding from this data? Can I understand that who is the dependent on, of which employee? No, we cannot understand. So, for this name is a name is name is maybe same name may be same amit is there again the amit can be there for a, another employee's dependent so here name cannot be differentiate one one dependent from other dependent okay therefore employee 101 may have the dependent, may not have the dependent, we cannot identify. Therefore, dependent is a weak entity set. So how we can represent, how can we give the key attribute for this weak entity set? Now we can add here employee ID. So employee ID and name of the employee together can be the key attribute. So employee ID 101, employee ID 101. Employee ID 104, employee ID 105, and so on. So see here, employee one has two dependents, son and wife. Now, can I differentiate particular dependent with the help of these two? So I can make this as a key attribute. And the relationship employee has, this relationship is also weak. It is a weak relationship of weak entity set. Next, mapping cardinality constraint. This is very important topic in entity relationship diagram. Here mapping cardinality. Mapping means what is the relationship of one entity in the relationship set? 
express the number of entities to which another entity can be associated via relationship set mapping cardinality most useful in descending describing binary relationship set it is generally used for describing binary relationship for binary relationship binary means when there is a one entity involved in the relationship r with the another entity so we can say that it is a binary relationship this mapping of cardinality cardinality means how this e1 is involved in the relationship whether there will be a one to one relationship or there can be a one to many relationship or many to one relationship or many to many relationship so how these entities have relationship with the another this is one to one one employee related with the one department one employee related with one department one employee related with another one department here one employee works on two projects p b1 and b2 or particular customer purchase two books b1 and b2 another customer purchase two books b1 and b3 and b4 so there is a relationship as one to many next is many to one obviously two employees working on a particular project three employees working on a particular project one employee working on a per one project so this is many to one next is many to many many employees works on many projects a1 is also working on project B, b2 and b1 a2 is also working on project b1 and b2 so this is many to many relationship this cardinality ratio can be represented with the help of various notations so in the different textbooks authors have used different notations for representation of the relationship so customer borrows the loan in the cost textbook when there is a one to one relationship then it is represented with the help of arrow okay a line with arrow drawing either a directed line this saying one it is one to one relationship one customer borrow can borrow only one loan that is my constraint of my bank so if i have a constraint in my bank that particular customer can borrow only one loan then there will be a single one to one relationship so a customer is associated with at most one loan via the relationship borrower and loan is associated with at most one customer via borrower therefore there is a one to one relationship if one customer borrows more than one loan then there is a one there is a line which indicates arrow arrow indicates sing one to one relationship if there is a no arrow from this side in single line then loan for the loan from loan there can be a number of loans we can allow if we want to specify one to two one to three then we can write here three digit as well as on this line but here we can in general we can represent that one customer may borrows many loan therefore one to many one customer placed m order so we can write m this is another way of representation of the same cardinality ratio that is one to many we can represent with the help of digits on the line next this is many to one relationship many means many customer borrows one loan means if i have a joint loan account so two person can borrow the one loan so there is a one relationship from loan side but from customer side many customers can borrow a one loan next employee belongs to the department many employees working in a particular department or belongs to a particular department so here we can write see here this is a line and here we can write one to one to many 
Next is many to many relationship. Customer borrows the loan. Here there is a no constraint. In the bank, there won't be any constraint. Many customer borrows many loan. Okay. So here from both the side, many to many relationship. A customer is associated with several loan by a borrower. And loan is also associated with many customer. Therefore, there is a many to many relationship. Therefore, there is no arrow. Next, student enroll in courses. So many student enroll for many courses. If one student is enrolling for Java, another student can also enroll for Java. Similarly, if the particular Java course is there, then here the course is open for all the student. Any number of students can enroll for a courses. Customer buys the product. Many customer buys many products because one product there are number of products for a particular type. Okay. So one customer buys the product, same product can be buy by the other person. Therefore, there is a many to many relationship. So we have studied various notations of ER diagram. Now, if we want to draw an ER diagram, we should know the statement of problem. How to write the statement of problem for a particular case study that we are going to study now and how to draw the ER diagram, how to understand, how to identify the notations, how to identify the entities, relationship, attributes, and so on. So consider one example, construct an ER diagram for a hospital with a set of patients and a set of medical doctors associated with each patient, a log of various tests and examination conducted. So this is the statement of problem which is given related with the hospital. So from the statement of problem, we should first identify that what are the different entities which are present, which are given in the statement of problem. So in the statement of problem, we can see here that there, there is a there is a, this is the ER diagram for hospital management system, or we can say hospital. So it is a database or a complete name of the case study, hospital management system or hospital. Now, what are the different objects? Patients. Obviously, if it is a hospital, then the patient and doctors will be the entities or the objects. Patient and doctor, there should be a relationship between the patient and doctor. What can be the relationship? What patient treats by the doctor? Or we can say that doctor treats the patient. So can we write the relationship between the doctor and patient? Yes. So doctor is a one of the entity. Doctor treats the patient. Associated with each patient, a log of various tests. So test can also be the particular entity. So patient undergoes for various tests. Can be the test for the blood test or can be the different type of deficiency test. So these are the various tests particular patient undergoes. Can we draw the relationship between the these various entities? Yes, we can draw the relationship of doctor patient and then patient to test. Doctor treats the patient. One doctor treats many patient. It is not mandatory that every doctor treats every patient. Okay, one doctor treats many patient. It is possible, but every patient should be treated by the particular doctor. Therefore, there is a total participation from patient side but from doctor side, there is a partial participation. Therefore, there is a single line. So one doctor treats many patients, therefore one to many. Doctor has what are the attributes? The attributes are not mentioned here. So we can uh, understand and we can write the any type of attributes that you want. Here I have written doctor ID, doctor name, doctor specialization. Okay. So you can use any of the attributes for particular 
doctor entity you can add number of attributes here patient id patient name okay don't consider specialization as a key attribute sorry i have written here so patient name address this is these are the this is these are the various attributes of a patient common attributes that i have written so patient undergoes for a test so test id test name test date and the amount he paid for the particular test so this is the patient undergoes for many tests therefore it is one to many relationship understood student another example of a company database car insurance company which which company car insurance whose customer one own one or more cars each each car has associated with it zero to any number of recorded accidents each insurance policy covers one or more cars and has one or more premium payment so from the statement of problem first identify that what are the different entities can you say that customer is a entity yes customer can be the entity then car can be the entity customer can be the entity car can be the entity what are the different other uh, entities identify it then identify the attributes Do draw the entities from left to right okay then draw the relationship between the entities then draw the relationship from top to bottom so there is will be a relationship from one entity to another entity so this is the customer customer own car car covers the policy policy has a payment premium pay payment premium pay is depend upon the policy therefore if there is a policy car covers the policy then they have a, they have to pay otherwise no car participated in the accident okay so this are this is the relationship between the various er diagram same diagram can be represented with the help of another notation here i have written customer own the car car participated in the accident so here you can draw the entity and attribute like this or you can go for another notation here the entity name and the attribute list of attributes you can see here payment number due date amount received on all these are the attributes premium payment is the name of the entity so various examples i have consider here for various case studies you can understand and draw the er diagram for each and every case studies thank you students for attending the lecture for today we we have understood here various er diagram notations and various examples of er diagram